thank you all for coming out. My name is Alan Kittleman. I am uh, the very uh, proud county executive of Howard County. Um, I appreciate you coming out tonight. John, thank you for parking the car. <laughs> not my car. I'm not talking about my car, Susan. Um, but I, you know, we try to do, uh, I made a commitment during the campaign. I do four town halls every year, and so this is the fourth for this year. So we're going to continue to do that. We kind of rotate around the county. So I'm glad we're down here in North Laurel today, tonight. Um, before we start, I want to acknowledge we have some, uh, some folks in the audience from the county administration, just in case any questions come up that they can maybe respond to that I might not have the answers to. Uh, Mike Milani is here from the Department of Recreation and Parks. Val Laz is here from the Department of Planning and Zoning. Kelly Simino is here from the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, we also have Deidre McKay, Director of Communications, uh, Andy Barth, our Press Secretary, and some other folks from uh, PIO. And they're here also. Mary Kay Sigety, our council person, is here. Thank you very much for being here, Mary Kay. Um, so if you have any questions, I've told her, don't worry. If there's, there's something she has information that I don't have and she wants to share with you, to jump up and, and talk as well. Uh, we also have other folks in, my, in the audience here from my office uh, because I will be straightforward with you. If you ask a question and I have an answer, I'll tell you I don't know. Uh, I, I, and I won't. And we'll, but we'll try to get the question written down so we can get back to you uh, with the response to you. Um, with that said, uh, I don't like to go any longer than that. This is about an hour and a half, a time for me to listen. Uh, and I do believe this is a time for me to listen, probably some, more than even talk. Uh, but I certainly will respond when I can to whatever concerns or questions you might have. So with that said, we also have uh, two uh, sign language interpreters here tonight. Uh, we do that every town hall we have and every uh, public meeting we have because I think it's important to be prepared no matter if there's anyone here who is deaf and hard of hearing or not, but we want to make sure somebody is available if someone needs that interpreting. So good. So we will go ahead and start. We have uh, microphones on both sides here. If you would like to get up and ask a question, you're more than welcome to do so. I should also say uh, Kate McLeod has just walked in from uh, Councilman Terraza's office. Thank you for being here as well. And Mary Clay is here from Councilwoman Sigety's office, so they have double teamed us tonight. So that's great. So anyone, first question? Anybody? Yep, Ellen, come on up. Why don't you come up here so I can hear you? And, and we are taping this so that people who are not able to attend will have an opportunity to uh, watch it later. Hi, good Hi, evening. Hi, Ellen. Glad to see you. Good to see you too. Um, as you know, I am a concern as you know, I am a concerned citizen mm -hmm. from Savage. Um, and I appreciate that you have taken the time to have a town hall meeting for what, and in a place that some have called um, the dumping ground or the forgotten area of Howard County. We all, you know, know that's true. I have a few questions and comments with regard to the settlement at Savage Mill. I know that you are a proponent of a person has a right to do whatever with his private property. Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't say whatever, but yeah. But yeah. Close Some things to you can but yeah, no, I believe okay. in property rights. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but a developer does not have the right to take public parkland for profit. Mm -hmm. um, our friends in Savage, uh, Susan and John Garber, uh, represented Savage in a meeting two weeks ago with you, around mm -hmm. two weeks ago mm -hmm. with you, um, with, uh, with you, various county agencies, uh, and the developer, uh, Bizzuto, the developer. Right. In that meeting, a plan was presented by the Garbers, which would actually reduce the land, land swap footprint mm -hmm and take the developers back to the original acreage without a parkland swap. We, Howard County citizens, and I think I speak for several people here, are opposed to providing our land just to benefit a developer. And as our leader mm -hmm. and protector, mm -hmm. you should be too. Uh, at the Savage Community Association last night, um, the Bizzuto representative, Bobby Bird, mm -hmm. uh, asked our community for street names already for this mm -hmm. development. My question is, number one, has this development been approved and we have not been told? Uh, number two, is uh, the land swap a political decision or a land use decision? And number three, what is your takeaway 
regarding the Garber recommendations. Mm -hmm. And well, I th thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> Thanks for being out here. And if I miss one of the questions, grab me. Um, uh, the first one, no, it's not, nothing, nothing's been approved yet. Um, and they could have certainly been out there just saying, hey, we want to get people's ideas of what names they want to have. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them asking that question. Uh, your second question about the uh, parkland, whether it's a political decision or not, uh, it's certainly not a political decision. I mean, it's, it's a decision that what we think is best for the community and what's best for uh, a savage in general. Um, I did meet, I actually met with uh, uh, Susan and John privately. Uh, then we met also with the developers privately, and then we had a meeting with everybody, so we had several meetings on this. Um, and I appreciate uh, when uh, Susan and John brought this other alternative. Also at the meeting was uh, Val Lazens, he was there as well from our Department of Planning and Zoning. Um, and, and, and we looked at it, and, and we had a discussion about it. I, had, I couldn't stay for the entire meeting, but I was there for a good bit of it. And then uh, there was discussion about that. I know there were some concerns by a developer if certain things couldn't work with their, their, their plan. Um, but right now we have to make that decision. We have made the final decision on the swap. Now I know that the swap was initially brought to the developer and to the county by some of the residents in, uh, in Savage and so uh, they've kind of, that wasn't their initial plan. Initial plan was to go forward with the way it was and then they kind of changed that and talking with our Recreation and Parks Department uh, they felt like there was actually a, a positive to doing this and if you look at it having more of a buffer from the steep slopes and more of a buffer from the river it looks to me uh, when you just look at it, like that's a positive development. Um, from what the, uh, Susan and John had shown us was they could still have the 35 units within the smaller area. I think there was some, not, there was some discussion before I left about whether or not that really was true because they'd have to move some down or whatever. But to me it seemed right now that one of the bigger issues was the six single family homes that are on the parkland that's being swapped. Mm -hmm. and that's what I've, I think that's what my biggest issue I have to make is, is that something that's, that, that shouldn't happen. Um, I mean, they're still going to have, it seems like there's an there's, there's a agreement now that 35 homes is what they could have. And the question is, should you have 29 down among the townhomes and six single-family homes, or should you have 35 in the regular area? That's kind of where I'm at now, and I've got to make that decision. But it's definitely not political. Definitely not political. Did I hit everything? I can't remember what the last one was. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thanks. I will, I will, I will not do mm. that. No, that's okay. That's okay. You're, 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 you're nice. You're nice. You're nice. Okay, N next person. Sure. Justice Mike first. Yes. She's a bit taller than I am. Mm -hmm. All right, so first, thank you for hosting this. Thank you. Um, I'm speaking as a parent of a high school student at Athelton High School mm -hmm. and a parent of a uh, seventh grader at Mary Hill High School. I'm not sure how much you're aware. We had a quick conversation before yeah. this meeting got started, but about the recent racial mm -hmm. activity, mm -hmm. crimes, postings, whatever. I can talk more specifically about they were at um, Athelton, which we had a uh, 11th grader mm -hmm. post um, several racial racist postings mm -hmm. at Murray Hill we've had two incidents of racial vandalism which is a crime police can determine whether or not it's a hate crime and so I don't know how much you know of this I like mm -hmm. to get the reaction from you mm -hmm. and your office and understand what if anything you are doing to address it mm -hmm. I like to understand what law enforcement mm -hmm. is doing to address this I have actually spoken with the uh, superintendent of the schools we've talked mm -hmm. to our PTA mm -hmm. we are forming a diversity committee at Athleton yeah. to try to deal with and to address some of these issues but there is um, a lot of concern a lot of fear I think you may have also been made aware of what police have called a three-year-old posting mm -hmm. of a, um, a high that. school student from River Hill who actually mm -hmm. was holding a handgun mm -hmm. and threatening African Americans yeah. in her posting. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of fear, mm -hmm. there is a, um, a lot of concern, and there is a lot of questions that people have about what mm -hmm. can we all do as a community mm -hmm. to try to stop this because again, since I've been dealing with this rapid fire for the last, actually I think it's been a week, it's not even a week. Mm -hmm. I think this thing started on Wednesday when the news came out of the, um, the Appleton incident. Mm -hmm. Then on Monday, we got news from Murray Hill of, a, um, of graffiti with a, um, a hate group symbol mm -hmm. being spray painted on the building. And then we got another message today where it had been another incident of vandalism, same type of thing, some type of um, what the principal described it as because he's obviously got limitations to what he can tell the public mm -hmm. but it was a um, political words followed by a, um, a symbol of a hate group so 
A lot of feel for parents out here. The um, Board of Education, HCPSS, sponsored a forum on Monday night you may have been aware of that was initially designed to deal with um, internet safety and posting, and it became a dual purpose meeting. I was in that meeting, and a lot of lot of things were talked about there. Mm -hmm. Productive, but you still got a lot of people out here, big part of your community, where there's a lot of fear and a lot of mm -hmm. questions and concerns. Mm -hmm. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming out, and I'm glad I had a chance to talk to you ahead of time. Uh, do you want to respond to that? Do you have something else? No, I'm, no. I just, no, okay, just wanted to hear what you're going to say. No, no, sure, sure. No, and I and I appreciate that. And um, and if it, it certainly frustrates me and angers me that we have this happening. Uh, what really frustrates me is the fact that. And you wouldn't know this, but uh, my dad was one of the leaders of the civil rights movement in Howard County. Uh, he actually was the first white person to ever join the NAACP of Howard County. And to this day, is the only white person to ever be president of the chapter here. Um, and he was the education chair during the desegregation movement in Howard County. Uh, and so for me, you know, I grew up knowing the people who changed our county. I mean, all the leaders. And so what really heart is heartbreaking to me is to see how much work had been done in the past and to see this happening now. Um, and because Howard County, you know, I've lived here all my life and there were certainly times, even a long time ago when I was a young boy, how, how, how some bad things happening here. But, um, and even just last February when I had my state of the county, we talked about that, that, that terrible video that was put out by Mount Hebron student, you might remember. Um, so it angers me, it frustrates me, it, it, it really saddens me because this is not the Howard County I know, this is not the Howard County I love. And so we, um, we certainly are, our police department is looking into the areas they, that they have to, that are, that are, that are, that are law enforcement related. Uh, but I did uh, ask Dr. Sands, who are Office of Human Rights, to put together a community forum as well for Howard County to address these issues and to bring people together. So hopefully you'll be hearing about that and we'll make sure it's publicized when we do that. Uh, I'm glad the school system took some action right away. I appreciate them doing that, uh, but it's, it's not something that we're going to tolerate in Howard County, and I'm going to continue to speak out against it. Um, but I will also tell you it's frustrating to me because there is some evidence that there are people who are trying to actually per per uh, perpetuate this even more. Right. Like I say, that, that posting from the River Hill student, it's totally, totally terrible posting, but it was three years ago, and other people are now reposting it. Yeah. The concern there is that kids are kids. Kids mm -hmm. talk, they know ten times more of what we know of what's going on. In That's for sure. And can, can there was a, up on my Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess you can stay. I'm sorry. Yeah, my fault. Yeah. No, the, um, I understand that people are saying that's a three-year-old posting. I'm not questioning the facts mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. But it has come up and chatter is going on with kids now because they're saying this kid is still in the school system. And that's brought up a natural question to say, okay, you got a minor with a handgun saying... I'll, I'll make sure everyone knows it's a pellet gun. I okay. just want to make sure you know that okay. that's what the police But said. perception yeah. is reality for that's so fine. many people, I just want right? to make sure everyone knows <laughs> that it was a pellet gun. Okay. So, but the threat was there. Mm -hmm. I'd rather not repeat. I repeated something the other night. I think some people got upset for no, I'd rather not repeat I, I, I what he said. said. Yeah. Okay. I know what you um, said. Yeah. But the concern is that this kid is still in the school system mm -hmm. and that she's coming to, um, to one of the local high schools. She's transferring. Mm -hmm. And kids are saying that, well, how can she still be in the school system? Nothing is being done about this. Why isn't someone expelled for that type of behavior? Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that we have to be careful about when we decide to expel people because, again, young people do really stupid things. Mm -hmm. And if it's been three years and nothing's happened for the last three years, it's kind of hard to come back and say we should expel her for something she did three years ago. I'm not part of that decision. Well, the, the, the issue was why wasn't it done then? I know, okay, but I'm saying, but now, but you, I think an argument could be made that she's been in there for three years, I haven't heard anything since then. Um, and, uh, but I want to go back to my other points. I think it's important. I think there are some people in our community who want us to be afraid mm -hmm. and who maybe repose things with a desire to have people be afraid. And that's what I really am frustrated by. I mean, I'm frustrated by the fact that there was an original posting, but I'm also really frustrated that someone would take advantage of something that happened three years ago and try to perpetuate, make, make it even bigger now when it, it was gone. It was just gone. Um, and so I think we have problems on both sides here. And I think that's the problem I really am frustrated with is that we, uh, we have lost our, uh, our civility, we've lost our respect, we've lost our uh, understanding that regardless of your race, your heritage, your religion, your, your sexual orientation or gender identity or expression, it should not matter at all how you're treated. Um, not at all. And so that's, that's what I'm going to continue to talk about. And, uh, and we put a statement out, I know the county council put out a statement as well to show that in Howard County government we are united to say this is not acceptable. Uh, so we're going to continue to do the best we can to make that happen. Um, 
you know, as you said, some people do some things, but we're going to make sure that they know that's not what's going to be uh, seen as acceptable in Howard County. We're going to continue to talk about it, and we'll, and like I say, we'll try to do what we can to get the word out to people. But I appreciate you being out here, and I didn't say to be any, but I'm an Atherton Raider too. Uh, it was just 40 years ago when I graduated. Um, but thanks for being out here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Then you'll be next. Okay. Hi. Hi. I'm Gina. Sure. I'm short, sorry. I'm Gina Epps, and I'm a resident mm -hmm. of Howard County. Thank you for your Facebook message. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So my question is, while the other post was three years ago, mm -hmm. and as um, she has stated, mm -hmm. why wasn't anything done then? You answered mm -hmm. that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this student now, the one mm -hmm. that made the recent post, what are the ramifications mm -hmm. of doing something like that? And mm -hmm. my question is because if those kind of comments or situations erupt in school and someone gets hurt, mm -hmm. then what? Mm -hmm. I, I want to know what is being done to stay ahead of that, to ward off that kind of thing. What are the consequences mm -hmm. of someone making those kind of posts or saying those kind mm -hmm. of things in school? Or what if you <coughs> find the person, are we pursuing the person who has made those mm -hmm. um, signs on the school and mm -hmm. what happens then mm -hmm. because the thought for some is not to bring up old things from the past it happened mm -hmm. we move forward and you are 100 percent correct children kids do awful crazy silly right. things all the time but when you begin to talk about hate mm -hmm. and um core evilness that's something a little different and then when you're faced with it when someone comes to you and says like a, a, a third grader came home in my neighborhood in tears because someone another kid told him that his parents said that they're sending all of your friends right. back to where they came from mm -hmm. or um, the, you know awful things like that for a third grader mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. to I'm finally the n-word with right. black mm -hmm. paint on your face mm -hmm. I understand that we're standing together as a community and as leadership mm -hmm. um, to say that it is not tolerated mm -hmm. but what are the consequences of doing these kind of things mm -hmm. to show someone it's not going to be tolerated it's one right. thing to talk about it and have a committee mm -hmm. but what is the action behind it right. to keep all of Howard County safe mm -hmm. no I appreciate it and I think the the one you're talking about, the Appleton person, the other one was River Hill, I believe. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the principal had a meeting with the parents of that mm -hmm. student. I don't, if you know better, I don't know if you know more about it. If she can respond to it, that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. That is the biggest question mm -hmm. about consequences that students mm -hmm. have been asking and that parents have been asking. Mm -hmm. And while we are aware that there was a meeting, because of privacy laws, the principal is saying that she can't disclose well, what actually has taken place. And I've encouraged her to go as far as she can mm -hmm. to say what you've done to deal with it because people feel like nothing is being done. Right. Right. And there's a prophylactic effect of letting kids know that this is what will happen to you if Correct. you do these things. Correct. And that's very, very important. And that message is not coming across at all. No. No, I, I appreciate that too, and I, I think that the school system is doing what they can do, and of course they have those things. Um, and, and, and we will certainly, we say, we talk about it, you know, the county government, we can talk about what's important, we can tell people what we need, how we need to treat each other. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, and, and, I, and again, I say this as a son of a civil rights leader, mm -hmm. someone who grew up and was with the African American leaders of Howard County from the time I was a little boy, so it's very personal to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also, can't arrest somebody for speech. You really not, can't. Not at all. And I so can't. we tell them that it's terrible. We tell them that it's not acceptable. We try to get the peers to have pressure to say it's not. I mean, when we had the, what happened in Mount Hebron, uh, we had the Office of Human Rights bring together young people from the high schools to talk about how we need to relate. Because sometimes, I don't know about you, I have four children, mm -hmm. and I remember when they were in high school, I have one, my youngest is a senior, but I wasn't the easiest person they would listen to. I mean, they might listen to their friends before they listen to me. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to focus on getting their friends to say, hey, this is going to be acceptable. And I know we had a couple of, uh, back then, I guess it was last spring, when we had some folks from Mount Hebron walk out, some Hammond walk out, just kind of show solidarity. Those things, I think, are important, because then it shows that the peer pressure is the other way. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have peer pressure against you if you do things like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that that's what we can do. But from, our, from my point of view as a county executive, that's what we can do. We mm -hmm. can't say, 
you know, if you do this, we're going to prosecute you, because I really don't think we can prosecute right. someone, unless there's but, a threat, like the guns or something, but right. yeah. But vandalism yeah. is... Van oh, vandalism, there's no question, vandalism, vandalism I'm, sure, I'm sure the police department's uh, investigating that, I'm sure they're not just not yes, doing it. Yes, but vandalism mm -hmm. and um, while in school, we already said, stated that mm -hmm. young people are volatile, yeah, Young yeah. people do silly things sometimes. Adults do silly things too, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so what happens mm -hmm. if they can post all of these things mm -hmm. on the internet, free speech, I get it, mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, mm -hmm. free speech, I get it. We can post all of these things on the mm -hmm. internet, right. we can say whatever we want to say in school, but it's our children mm -hmm. who are feeling this the most. Mm -hmm. It is our children who are being called the N-word right. and being said that um, our Latino children are being said that they're going to, how is that to a fourth grader? What is being done? What are the policies, not, what are the policies that are in place to keep that from happening? What if a teacher hears another student saying to another student that they're the N-word? What happens? What What's done about that? Right. What is the school policy? Is there a no tolerance policy like the, it, like there is if someone is fighting, or what is the what are the right. parameters around that? Right. And and unfortunately, that's a question I have to ask the school board because I don't. The county government does not have any control in the school system or in the schools itself. We don't develop policy for the school system. Mm -hmm. We just don't do that. Uh, we don't have the. Even if we wanted to, we couldn't do it. Um, right. So so that's. I think that's a good question. We have a new school board. Uh, three new members. I think that now would be a good time to talk to some of them and say, hey, what is your vision for how we're going to deal with this in our school system? Are you guys talking to the Board of Education? Are you guys, I mean, I know you can't dictate policy. Oh, certainly, no. I, but I, I are there conversations sure. around before this powder cake blows up? Right. Right. What are we going to do? Right. No, no, there certainly isn't. Like I said earlier, we're also going to put together this community discussion. And we'll certainly include the school system as part of that. It's okay. not going to be. Uh, apart from that. And will we also include the African American Roundtable of Howard mm -hmm. County? We we'll certainly include the African American community. Of course we would do that. There's no question. Okay. We'd have the African American community involved. We have to have that. Um, whether it's a roundtable or, I mean, there's there's not not just one group that, that, that represents the African Correct. American community. It could be the NAACP. It could be a lot of other people. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You were up. I'm sorry. Yeah. I came out tonight with the same concerns that have been raised here. Uh -huh. um, I think that uh, I had a kid just finished, you know, all, my kids went to Murray Hill, I've got a kid at Athelton now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm concerned that, and I'm, I'm, I'm distraught about mm -hmm. who we've elected mm -hmm. to run our country. Mm -hmm. I think that this references to kids will be kids, kids make mistakes. Yeah. We, we have, uh, you know, a president who was mm -hmm. saying just locker room talk. I mean, we mm -hmm. have, mm -hmm. it, it's a new day of expectation for what our leaders are going to role model and tolerate. Mm -hmm. And I think the climate of fear is very high, yeah. and it's, it's race, it's religion, it's all kinds of things. So two, in addition to the forums and talking mm -hmm. about it and sort of saying all the right things in settings mm -hmm. like this, I had two thoughts that could be positive, okay. proactive, that would make a stronger adult peer pressure mm -hmm. kind of community. One is, um, I don't know what, what year it was that all the Choose Civility bumper mm -hmm, stickers mm -hmm. came out. Um, I think it was mm -hmm. a library yeah, uh, initiative. Library, library program. Um, yeah. It's always struck me as kind of a low bar, although I support mm -hmm. civility. I think I'm not a, you know, I'm not great at slogans, but I think mm -hmm. something that e expresses inclusiveness, uh, commitment to to heart and respect and diversity for mm -hmm. our county, an expression of pride that we can mm -hmm. start seeing everywhere should be a high priority for our leaders so that it's visible. I know this was a campaign where nobody wanted to put <laughs> candidate signs uh, on their cars anywhere. It was almost like the country wasn't having an election this year. It was kind of amazing. But, um, but now there's a need for us to stand against bigotry in, in a huge new way, given who we've got recommended to be our new domestic policy advisor, which is appalling to me and terrifying. Um, the other thing that I've been listening to the news driving over here, I'm hearing a lot of mayors from other cities talk about they're willing to refuse federal funding to make their city a sanctuary city. And I would suggest that Howard County take the lead on becoming, you know, one of the first counties to declare itself a sanctuary county, which would also reinforce a message of inclusivity and zero tolerance for any officials rounding people up because of suspicions and who they are. I think the 
and my voice is shaking. Mm. I haven't slept much this week. I'm afraid for the country. I mean, and that sets aside my fears about all sort of policies about <laughs> health care, environment, education, you know, all of the things that are at threat, mm. but personal safety right now and a mm -hmm. sense of mutual bonds of trust, citizen to citizen. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have to go more beyond sort of saying the nice right mm -hmm. things mildly. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be bold and we're looking to you to lead on that. Okay, well I appreciate it. I appreciate your suggestions there. Um, I will tell you we have been through this before. Um, back when I was young and, and you know my dad was involved, I mean African Americans would go to restaurants in Route 40 and they would not be served. Uh, when I was at the Maryland State Senate, there were some friends of mine who were actually in the Senate who represented Baltimore City who told me when they were young, they were told, don't go to Howard County, it wasn't safe for you. Um, we seem to be fighting these battles again and again, which is what I go back to what I said earlier. It's frustrating to me that we're fighting them again and again. Um, so we will continue to, to do the best we can. We can certainly look at and see if there's a, a different type of uh, slogan or ad campaign, whatever you're talking about, to try to show people that we are uh, we're a community that invites diversity, that welcomes diversity. Um, that's what we can sort of be talking about. But, um, but it's, 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 it's something that we have, to, we have to come together. I mean, I, I really do believe that, uh, that we can go through this. We can get through this. I know there's a lot of fear. I mean, I didn't support either candidate, frankly. I just didn't. I said I couldn't vote for either one of them. And so uh, I think, though, that I, I, I take Secretary Clinton and President Obama, and, and, I, and I take what they've said with, with great heart to say, hey, let's, uh, let's try to be calm. Let's try to work on these things. I will tell you that we're not going to let that happen in America. It's not going to be a place where people are going to be rounded up. I, I don't, we're not, not going to stand for that. Um, but we need to be calm, and we can't, be, we can't allow violence, even if we feel it's for the sake of good, to happen. We have to be more like Martin Luther King has taught us to be somebody who can stand up to injustice, but not do so by harming somebody else. That's what my worry is, too. Yeah. What do you think about um, mm. a sanctuary county? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that's the right way to go. I, I really don't. Um, you know, you don't want to, I mean, you can say, I guess someone's definition of sanctuary may be different than somebody else's definition of sanctuary. I mean, I personally would not say that if somebody was a criminal who was a violent criminal, they should stay here. I, I don't think so. I know, I know, but I'm saying, but if someone's a sanctuary, they might say it was true in San Francisco. Uh, so. I think we have to be careful with that. I think we have to be careful. I think we can tell people that we are a, a, a place where, where people are welcome, where diversity is welcome, and we treat everybody with respect. Um, but we don't have to get into, you know, you know, calling different things. I think we can show people. I mean, our county has been this way. Gosh, Jim Rouse came here with a vision to make us a diverse county for income as well as race and religion. And we have, in the last 50 years, I think we've gone a long way. <laughs> From 1967, uh, before Loving versus Virginia, when we couldn't have interracial marriages, to where we are today, it's a whole lot better. Now, we're having problems right now, but we're a whole lot better than we were then, and we need to now work on how we can stop what's happening right now. So, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to say that th mm -hmm. this idea that, you know, mm -hmm. progress is inevitable, um, you, it, it's, not, it's not inevitable. I, I, it takes work. It takes yeah. vigilance, and it takes determination. And so when when, when I suggest looking at uh, doing what like the mayor of Santa Fe is talking about with the sanctuary city yeah. and you suggest that I'm saying we should protect violent I'm not criminals, you're that's, saying. <laughs> that's not what I meant, no, that wasn't not, my suggestion. I'm not saying you're suggesting, I'm just saying yeah. that I don't think that everyone has the same definition of sanctuary. Uh, that's there is fine. No definition well, I'm sanctuary. saying we yeah. can work on a, yeah. on a definition, mm -hmm. but I think that would be a concrete, practical, mm -hmm. and, and frankly very newsworthy at a national level mm -hmm. point of pride for us mm -hmm. if we really are serious about our legacy of, of leading on diversity and inclusiveness. I grew up here, I'm a child of Columbia. My parents were pioneers, yeah. I went to Running Brook and, mm -hmm, and Wild Lake. Mm -hmm, and I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have always felt huge civic pride in being from this place. Mm -hmm. And I've, I went away to school and I came back to raise my kids here yeah. and I felt proud of, and, and so I'm embarrassed by how shocking mm -hmm. this past year has been to me because I grew up mm -hmm. in the bubble and I've been shocked and my african-american friends are very impatient that white people are so shocked and i don't blame them mm -hmm. um but it puts more pressure on us so you've used yeah. the word frustrated a few mm -hmm. times about the situation now and i mm -hmm. i um that word jumps out at me because 
frustrated is here and fear is here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, mm -hmm. it's not a time to calm down. I think it's a time to step forward. But there's so. a difference between calming down I'm and I'm not forward. hysterical. No, 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 no. <laughs> but when I say calm down, I'm talking about doing things through and talking to people. Because the last thing I want to do is have people rise up and become violent on the other side, too. And I'm telling you, there's possibilities of that happening. And I don't want that to happen. I think that if we're going to take any type of lesson from Martin Luther King Jr. is that we have to become united as a group. I agree. And, and our county, we, have, we don't have a history of the government or anything in the government using that, at least since, since the 60s, being, uh, being against uh, uh, minorities in our county. I think it's actually the opposite. I think our, our government's been very inclusive. I mean, we have more uh, minorities in our department heads than we've, I think, probably almost ever had. And so we're not that way. I think the evidence out there is quite to the difference. So what's happening nationally, I don't think it's happening in Howard County. We have some issues right now, but I, I don't think it's happening when we hear some of the other places. And so I will continue to make sure that our county's not that way. And, and that's all I can say. We had issue with the sheriff recently, too. Well, I know. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've got to be, we've, yeah. we've got to be I, on I, point with and, 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 and seriously, I think it's a great example. What happened with the sheriff? Every single elected official, Republican, Democrat, came out and said it's not acceptable. And in a month, he was gone. I'm saying, I think that shows you, I think if you want to have the country see something, that's what the country should see, is that it didn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat, every single person stood up against that person. And I think it's important to note that that was a Democrat. So there are Democrats and Republicans both have people in their parties who are not uh, doing well. So I, I'm, I'm saying, so I think that what's important out there is to show that this is not all one side, all the other side, but it took us as a community to come together. Think about that with the sheriff, the county executive, the county council the federal delegation, the state delegation, everybody came out opposing him. And that's kind of what we need to do now. We all have to come out opposing any type of threats, any type of violence, any type of racial hatred. We've got to all come out against it, all, all in, all in. No one's over here. Susan? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, uh, Mr. Kilman, I want to thank you personally, um, no. instead of just by letter, for um, the electrifying of Baldwin Hall in yeah, Savage. Yeah. It will enable us to have a great, inclusive, mm -hmm. old-fashioned family-style um, holiday celebration to which everyone is invited on December the 3rd. If I can change the topic. Sure. Um, <clears throat> as you know, I have had um, have been following the APFO Mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. and there's been a long delay mm -hmm. because other legislation was before the and council and such and the flood mm -hmm. and so there have been things that have put that off and I'm hoping that now we're going to see that come forward mm -hmm. but my question to you and it's kind of a two-parter um, given the results from the APFO task force mm -hmm. this adequate public facilities task force. Personally, I was disappointed that I didn't think they went far enough. I didn't think um, some very important items were addressed. Okay. And recently, when I've looked at how Prince George's and Montgomery counties have put forward uh, far stronger mm -hmm. APFO legislation, even the city of Laurel has put forward some pretty strong um, APFO legislation. I'm wondering if we can anticipate some enhancements to what the task force produced when you bring it to the council. Okay, well, thank you. And I appreciate your service, everyone's service on the, on the committee. Yeah, we, um, we received the report right before the budget, and then we had to deal with the budget. And then, of course, this summer we had the, uh, the terrible flood in Ellicott City. But we have gotten, I've been in discussion with the Department of Planning and Zoning. They've given us their thoughts on the recommendations and where we can move forward. So it's our goal to have something, the, the, the council, uh, we can't have legislation in December, so our goal is to have something at the beginning of the year. Uh, there's also been some suggestion that we should make sure the planning board gets looked at it again as well, because before we do something, we should have them look at it. So, but you should be hearing something soon about where we kind of want to go with the legislation. And, and I'll look and see if there's other areas. I mean, what was nice about the recommendation, they gave us all the other things that even weren't adopted, but that were still motions. So I have all that information, so I can look at that as well. So. But you'll, you'll hear something, hopefully, by the end of the year. Good. I would, I would hope mm -hmm. that those things which did not necessarily yeah. pass mm -hmm. under the supermajority mm -hmm. rules mm -hmm. that they had established for themselves right. 
could still be considered. I'll, we'll definitely look at it. Okay. If I could link that to kind of a part two. Okay. Here in the southeast, we are obviously very concerned about the issues in APFO. Mm -hmm. um, over time, there has been the belief that this area uh, should be the area for development because the facilities are here. Mm -hmm. The reality is the facilities are not here. And I have to express my disappointment that um, any kind of comprehensive planning mm -hmm. for this area continues to be lacking. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm disappointed that um, while you had mm -hmm. a staff member mm -hmm. assigned to us, Andy Byun, mm -hmm. he went on to the nonprofit world. Mm -hmm. We just lost Raj Kuchakar mm -hmm. yesterday, I believe, was his mm -hmm. last day. Mm -hmm. um, it has left us at a point in time where we have sustainable community status and no one to help us. And um, it's, it's unsettling that uh, county government has been able to help Ellicott City, and I don't mean related no, to fine. the flood, no. I mean help Ellicott City prior to the flood with grant applications. Long Reach has certainly gotten a great deal of attention. They now have sustainable status and we're I waiting to get approved for that. I don't think we got approved Jefferson since then, but we, we did it, but the state hasn't, I don't think, have they? The state hasn't approved it. I don't know, do you know the state came back yet with that sustainable communities? I haven't heard that. We, we've sent the application to them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm concerned, um, and I understand there's to be another um, consultant study on the area, and mm -hmm. it has in turn been pushed back. Mm -hmm. Again, things happen, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. things have to be. Right pushed back. But I just want to urge you and the department, mm -hmm. Mr. Lastens, to remember we're out here. On the one hand, we don't want too much attention, like Elk Ridge, which is just exploding with population. But we, we do need help and uh, just like to take opportunities to remind you that we're here and we would like attention as well as no the other parts no of the county. And we, and we will. Thank you very much. I know that, uh, I know you, that the VAL meets regularly with the Howard County Citizens Association and, and has met with you, and we're trying to make sure that everybody knows that we, we do understand some of the issues here. And the whole, the, I guess it was the implementation plan that started to look at implementing what the prior study had done uh, got put on hold, unfortunately, because of Ellicott City. Uh, but we're trying to get that back on track, too. So thanks. Are you up? I didn't know if you were staying there. Yeah. Yes, I live in Emerson, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a specific problem we're having uh, with that. some squatters mm -hmm. uh, that you may be aware of. Uh, there's criminal activity taking place in this, uh, right. uh, in this town home. There have been threats made against the, uh, uh, the neighbors. Uh, we, uh, the, the people that are living in the town home have showed the police what we know is a false lease because mm -hmm. uh, the, um, uh, the person claiming to own the property has long been dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is working its way through the banks. We're working with the homeowners associations, but it's very limited what they can do. Mm -hmm. This is really a uh, tragic and scary situation, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the people that live nearby. Is there anything the county can do to uh, help address this, um, uh, this problem? Yes, I, and I had some conversations with other residents of Emerson about this as well. Uh, and yet we certainly have our police department looking into it. We also have our inspections, licensing, and permit department confirming a whole the deal about the lease because yeah I, I can't imagine there's a bank that's leasing out to some I mean that's just cause I think the bank owns the property now uh, so yeah no we're definitely we're definitely working on it we've talked to people in the community and uh, you know, both DILP and the police department are, are dealing with it so uh, hopefully it's something we can have something soon okay well thank you very much yeah. and if there's any other actions that uh, mm -hmm. you know that, that we could do in the community to help right. um, solve this problem we'd be glad to do no, that. no thank you and thank you for letting us know I didn't know about it until just recently so thank you for letting me know thanks yep no one over here, Brent. Good evening. Good evening, Brent. I don't want to undermine any of um, Susan's, Susan's uh, eloquent speech um, mm -hmm. um, enforcing um, our APFO um, items, but um, the smaller setting in our neighborhood is a little more personal. So uh, I hope you forgive me. I'm going to talk a little personal here. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, you drove through our community here. You drove down our street. Um, you're in a community center that literally had the parkland sold off to developers. You drove 
around the Turf Motel where we've had regular murders from the homeless population in the area. We have had many pedestrian deaths up and down Route 1 through the area which has considerable safety issues. And you drove past my grandfather's property where there's a hole in the ground right now. My daughter came to me several months ago saying, Daddy, when are they going to come bulldoze our house? And she said it, this is not a little child just saying it off the top of her head. This is a child saying this because she asked me, why did they bulldoze grandpa's house? They shouldn't have bulldozed grandpa's house. Why, why did they, what, are they going to come cut down our trees? I'm like, don't worry, they won't do that. Actually, the county did do that. The county came on our property and cut our comms lines. The count, we, um, she, she asked, you know, if, if anything happens, what do I do? And I go call the police. And she said when the police came by, by Grandpa's house, they didn't stop them from bulldozing the home. Mm -hmm. They bulldozed the home. And what I'm speaking of, and you know it very well, mm -hmm. my aunt um, lives next door. When her husband, my uncle, died, we had a developer sign over the title to the house to himself and start construction, start demolition during the APFO committee, mm -hmm. threatening us regularly during the committee before each meeting, we're going to destroy your home and everything in it. And our task force chair would not stop this. They allowed that to continue. We talked to you about mm -hmm. what it's clearly, clearly as a lawyer, you know, you can't just write a wife off a will and give give property to a developer. It was clearly, clearly a method to intimidate and harass us during the committee meetings. And the reason I was in the committee meetings and fighting hard, really hard, is because our schools are overcrowded. There are safety issues. We, we care very much about the community and I came forward and pushed very hard and are still pushing very hard to ensure that our developer community contributes at least to make sure we have the appropriate safety and capacity for school children. The fight back on that is vicious, as you know, and you, you were present in there. And the developer who did all this is a regular contributor. He was at your family, sponsoring your family picnic, and he's proposing our courthouse where I'm trying to try this episode in court. I do not even know that we can get a fair trial. Our member, we have 54,000 students in our school system. They deserve better than trailers with no sprinklers. They need safe roads. We need to be economically sustainable. And I understand the development's community reluctance to implement anything that may impinge on their profits. But at the moment, I feel like it's a fear tactic. We have destroyed what can never be replaced. And you have put fear into the hearts of my children who do not know at any time when people jump over the fence, what they're up to. They're terrified of surveyors. They're terrified of the contractor trucks, the C.J. Miller trucks. Mm -hmm. how, are, how are we going to proceed from here? How are we going to work with the school systems that they don't feel intimidated by this? And what, what's, what do you intend to see going forward with this? Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate it. But and, and I know you said, I'll, I'll talk more. I just have one question for you if I could. And I know what you're saying with your family, I feel, I feel terrible that your daughter would feel that way. I, I, but I want to ask that one question. They came on your property and cut your trees down? Yes. I mean, without talking to you, just came on the property and just took them down. They, I just want to make sure I understand, because that's something that I, I can definitely work on right away. It's documented. Huh? And, and they threw all the, all the debris and stuff in the middle of the property for us to clean up in the middle of a when fire season. Happen, Brent? When did that happen? I can give you all the documentation. Yeah, if I could get that, because I'm seriously, that, that's one thing that I could do. Honestly, right away. cutting down trees and throwing them in is nothing. But that's scaring your daughter. It's something. If taking it's, away someone's home. No, no, that I understand. And we talked about that, and that was a legal issue, and you guys are dealing with that. But I mean, your daughter being scared is bothering me too. I mean, I want you to know. I mean, and you're talking about how she says people coming on our property, cutting down our trees, and so I, I, I want to make sure I address that as well. But, but no, the, the bigger issue is, you know, we do have. Uh, 
the rules and, and you're on the AFO committee trying to make it stronger in your viewpoint of how better can happen. Uh, we got the recommendations. We're working on those recommendations. Um, and as soon as, uh, as, as I told Susan, we'll hopefully have something ready for by the end of the year to go to the council and or go to the planning board and then go to the council. I think it probably makes sense for the planning board to look at it again. Um, and then, then, we'll, then we'll do that. But, um, but no, there's, there's no, nothing I, I, I don't want, and, and, it, and it really saddens me when you talk about a young person being afraid of what's going to happen to their property or what the government's doing to them. And that's why I want to do whatever I can to alleviate those fears, because that's terrible. Um, so that's why, give me that information if you could, just so I can check into that, what happened with that one instance. But um, with regard to the schools, um, uh, we continue to uh, provide them with the funding that we can um, to make sure that they have additions or, or new schools are built to help us with the overcrowding. Um, I know your feelings about trailers. We've had those discussions for a couple years now, three years now probably. Um, and so we'll continue to do the best we can. I think there's also an issue of redistricting, frankly. Uh, for example, we have a 13th high school site that I know not everyone loves where we're talking about putting, I'm building it. Uh, but it's there, but we're being told that we don't uh, comply where, or we don't meet the state requirements for even getting more funding to build a new high school yet because we haven't, they look at the whole county's population. They don't look at the one school and the whole pot county is not, quote, overcrowded enough. And so we have to then have our school system do some redistricting. That should help our, 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 our students as well. So uh, we had a new, three new school board members, folks. And so now's the time to sit down and talk to these new school board members and say, hey, how, how are we going to deal with all this? So uh, I'll keep on working on the APFO issues. I'll work on issues of, of, of county government um, jurisdiction. But a lot of it, I think you also now have to talk to the school board about how, how they'll respond. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thank you for being out here again. Yep. You want to switch? No one's over here? Yes, Mr. Cohn. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, during the next year, what is your major goal to benefit Howard County? And is there anything in particular you'd like to do for the Laurel area? For the Laurel area? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, benefiting Howard County, I think the APFO is a big part. Uh, we're working on that right now. Um, there are quite a few, but with Laurel, and I'm surprised I haven't had a question about the pool yet. Because uh, I used to get questions all the time about the North, North uh, Laurel Community Center and having a pool here. Uh, that's still ongoing. Uh, Mike is here from the Park Rec 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 Recreational Parks. I know that next month they're going to start doing focus groups with residents around here talking about the pool. Uh, there's money already for design, I believe. And so we're focused on that because that's one thing I heard a lot during the campaign over the last two years is that there's not a pool down here in the southern part of Howard County. Uh, so I think that's a benefit to, to the folks here. Um, you heard we've already been working on the Baldwin Commons and, and hopefully putting some uh, infrastructure there to help. Uh, they're doing also some more infrastructure dealing with some sewer pipes and, and we're working on the light. I know that Ron, is he still here? Yeah, Ron. We were talking about the light at Foundry and Gorman and making sure it's pedestrian friendly and, and working. And, uh, I was able to let him know that we checked into that and by early December that's supposed to be functional. Um, so there, there's a lot of things happening. I mean, I know that we're, our fire department, I, I, I talked to uh, Chief Butler, trying to make sure dealing with the Laurel Regional Hospital and the fact that that's not uh, in, as, as serviceable as it was in the past to make sure that we have plans for how we can help people if there's emergencies to make sure they get to the right places. Uh, so we're looking at a lot of things that are happening down here in the south. Uh, so. And we'll continue to be doing that and, and continue to try to help everybody. But that's just a few of the things. But Ms. Epps, you want to come up again? Uh-huh. Hi. So, in, first of all, I didn't say the first time. I'm mm -hmm. glad that you came out and you mm -hmm. responded to my Facebook mm -hmm. request. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. My concern while sitting here listening mm -hmm. this evening, this young lady mm -hmm. stood up and said how mm -hmm. there's fear Mm -hmm. in the schools and fear with her children. Mm -hmm. I stood and said how there is fear mm -hmm. um, mounting with those that, um, that I speak with every day as well. Mm -hmm. Children have said that they were fear. And sir, please don't misunderstand. Your daughter should not be in fear of people coming on her property and doing mm -hmm. things to mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. But when he said that his daughter was in fear, you said, send me that. Send me and let mm -hmm. me see what I can do about that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get the same response when I told you my children were in fear. But I have the information about that. I don't have the information about that. I right. have the information about why I'm, your children are I'm fear. just saying that I'm looking for mm -hmm. that. My children are in fear, too. I live in fear. Mm -hmm. None of our children should be in fear mm -hmm. for people coming on their property mm -hmm. and our children for, our, for their lives. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. what's happening in the county 
is escalating and is getting to the point where it's volatile. And my question still remains, what are we doing to nip that in the bud before this thing explodes? Mm -hmm. And I will again say that what we're doing is we're gonna sponsor a community forum. We're gonna continue to work with the school system. Um, and as I explained to you, the reason I didn't say, give me this information, there's I nothing understand. for you to give me right now. Okay. Um, I, and that, cause I, I've heard all this. I mean, I've talked to the police department. I've talked to people. I've talked to, uh, uh, the folks at the school system about this. So, you know, we are doing what we can do right now to, to nip this in the bud to make mm -hmm. sure people know it's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've also contacted the, uh, the person who uh, is the executive director of FERN, our Foreign Board Information Referral Network, mm -hmm. uh, to let him know, is there something that I can do to help? Because I'm sure there are a lot of people that he deals with every day who are concerned about, he deals with minorities from all areas, mm -hmm. concerned about what, how they're maybe treated in the future. And mm -hmm. I said, hey, what can I do to help you and to help people you serve mm -hmm. to make them feel that they don't need to be nervous? So I am reaching out, and I apologize mm -hmm. if you didn't feel like I had the same passion maybe, but, um, but no, there's no question. And I, I think anybody who knows me knows that this issue of fear, this issue of racial hatred is something that makes me not just frustrated, makes me really, really angry. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, it's DNA for me. It's not, it's DNA. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was raised by Virgie Fleury. My dad was a single father. Virgie right. Fleury was married to Elhard Fleury, who mm -hmm. was the principal, the last principal of, of Harry Tubman High School, the last segregated school in Howard County. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want, I don't want you to think that it's not something that, 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 that is just making me live it. But I also know that I have to try to work within our community to bring us together. And that's what I'm doing. And, um, and, I, and, and I think we're, we're, we're making it clear to people that it's not acceptable in Howard County. And, you know, what really bothers me also is the fact that it's parents telling their kids. I mean, that's what you were talking about, parents telling right. the kids. I mean, and so what do yeah. we go back and tell our kids? If this happens to you, do what? And if this happens to you, where is your safe place? Who is the person that you go to? Because while I do not have an instance in our community yet, mm -hmm that says, but I've been around for a long time. We've had had instances mm -hmm. where the teachers said racial things and mm -hmm. didn't, you know, been around for a long time. Right. And so now our children don't feel comfortable seeking out someone of authority mm -hmm. to be their safe haven. What do I go back and tell these children? What do you do when these things happen to you? Mm -hmm. You can safely go to, mm -hmm. what do I do? Mm -hmm. And that's the concern I feel of right. the community. What, yeah. what do they, when we t send our children off to school every day, all children, not just African American children, oh, yeah. all children need to be safe. When I, and I know in this world that sometimes it's not by the Columbines and the other things that have happened around the world. But what do we say to mm -hmm. our children? We drop them off to school and we go to work. Mm -hmm. And how do we feel that we are they are safe from hatred? What do we tell them? Where do we tell them to go? Where's that safe place for them? I know you don't have all the answers. I just want to pose no, these things that. to no, you. No, I appreciate that. But I do think, and I, I think I appreciate the school system taking some action on this. I think that we have to find people in the school system that they can go to. I know you say there's some teachers. But that doesn't mean there aren't others there that, that we can make sure that people feel comfortable going to, whether it be a counselor, whether it be a school psychologist, whether it be mm -hmm. a, an administrator. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we do have to make sure that our students and our children know mm -hmm. who they can go to. The same through the police department. We need mm -hmm. to make sure our students and our young people feel comfortable going to their a police officer. Now, mm -hmm. some don't, and I understand that. Right. But we have been working very hard, and we just had last weekend another time for, uh, uh, for the police and the community to come together and talk about how better to have community policing, how better to have a relationship with our police officers in our community to make sure mm -hmm. people don't feel mm -hmm. afraid of our police officers, to make sure they feel that they're the ones that are helping us, not hurting us. Mm -hmm. And so those are what we can do. I mean, but I do believe the school system, we have to take an active effort, and I think the school system has to do this, to make sure people know that there are people there that kids can go to. I think that, I mean, there are people there. There really are. I mean, there are some that aren't, but we can make sure there are people there that they can trust. And I've lived here long mm -hmm. enough, and mm -hmm. I do know that 
I, I mm -hmm. sought out Howard County to bring my mm -hmm. family to mm -hmm. and have children and raise children. I lived here all my life also. Yeah. And I do know I have a great wealth of friends from every nationality mm -hmm. in Howard County. But there are some mm -hmm. that make me fearful to send my children mm -hmm. to school. Mm -hmm. I just need you I'm to know sorry. that. And, I, and, and I'm sorry you feel that way because it, seriously, mm -hmm. it makes me very sad and upset that you have a fear of sending your child to any school in Howard mm -hmm. County. Seriously, any school in Howard County can't mm -hmm. be that way. Um, and so that just shows that we have to continue to work harder. I That's what I yeah. needed to hear. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm sorry if I didn't say it the first time. I'm, I don't know who was first, so ladies first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm also here because I'm concerned about the escalating hate speech and violence that we're seeing in the area over the past mm -hmm. week. There's been such a tremendous rise in incidents over the, con mm -hmm. the country, as I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, I did see your statement and the mm -hmm. council statement recently, mm -hmm. and I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I think that was really important. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, disappointed me about the statements was while I think talking about bullying and civility is great, I think we need to use the words racism mm -hmm. and bigotry. Mm -hmm. I think this is really, I, really I important. Mm -hmm. um, I did have, uh, I, I'm glad to hear about the idea of a community forum. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with the people who have said we really need to get out in front of this and um, try to get some momentum uh, going in a positive direction. Um, the couple of ideas that I had thought of was that perhaps the county could reach out specifically to um, advocacy groups for vulnerable people in the, in the county mm -hmm. and ask them what would help what can the county do mm -hmm. um, either either what can the county do in terms of uh, legally or what can the county do in terms of creating a framework for citizens to come together and provide support okay. um, I think it might also I, I think that I understand the incidents in this county so far have been schools mm -hmm. but we've seen churches vandalized um, in Bethesda and um, yeah. nearby mm -hmm. so I wondered if it would be a good idea for the county for you to mm -hmm. um, you know issue some kind of a proclamation to that's that uh, says all um, all Howard County residents, people of all religions and none, are welcome in the county. And I don't know if people in um, mosques and uh, black churches and progressive churches would find it useful to have a copy of that to hang up in the lobby or not. That's some, one of the things we could ask. But you know, I'm I'm at my wit's end, and I appreciate your personal history in um, in fighting racism, and I hope that you can have, um, you know, share your wisdom and leadership okay. for how do we pull together again. I was too young in the 60s, so mm -hmm. counting on you. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate you. that, and thank you for your comments, but I think you're, you know, I have tried to make sure, I have gone to, and, and you know, we've had Diwali ceremonies uh, of the county government, we've had um, Eid and Iftar dinners that the mm -hmm. county government has kind of been part of to make sure everybody knows that everybody here is welcome. Nobody should feel like they can't. Um, that's why I did contact Fern, exactly what you were saying. Right. That's an advocacy group that I felt like that's the one I could think of right away that might have some people who are definitely anxious right now. Um, and so, but I, I appreciate your, your comments. I think that uh, we need to continue to do that. And, um, and you're right, uh, bigotry and hatred is, is not going to be acceptable here. And we're going to keep on making sure that's true. But thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming out. John. Hey. Um. I'd like to thank everybody who spoke with uh, so much emotion. Frankly, there's people who supported Trump here, and there's people who didn't. But I agree with everybody who's speaking from their heart. And we're talking about our children. And remember, we have to discipline our children, but we have to be fair. They are children. We have sinned. Uh, as you know, we had a racist sheriff here for how many terms? Three. He did other things. He got dismissed. He resigned, whatever. But we failed. Our politicians, our population, knew for some time there were problems in the Sheriff's Department. I ran against James Fitzgerald 
and I hope I helped to bring him down. But he was here in our midst, a danger to us, to our civil rights. For how many years? Twelve? How many politicians knew he was a problem? How many of us knew he didn't take the oath of office? I think this would be the perfect opportunity for a civilian review in the sheriff's department. He answers only to the people. The people should be involved. You're going to get rid of them. If it happens again, you should be there. There should be a, a civilian review. His job is to protect your rights. Take a look the next time you see the police stopping somebody. Look how nervous, look how tense it is. How many times, how many people here have had the police pull the guns on you because the situation was tense? How many? Anybody? Nobody? One, one person behind you, but How many times? Once enough. Tense, wasn't it? Where can you complain? Who can you complain to? By the way, how many of you knew the sheriff refused to take the oath of office since December? How many of you politicians? Mary. When did you know Mary? When did anybody know? When did the council know? Why weren't the people taken? Not taking the oath of office in Howard County? That would be high treason. Did he take the office? Mm -hmm. Yeah, did take the oath. No, did take the oath. Yeah. Is there any way, Alan, we can, can get the people involved in the sheriff's office? This is a constitutional office. Uh, by the way, uh, Larry appointed uh, uh, Bill McMahon uh, sheriff. Uh, I thought this was supposed to be an elected position, but certainly the governor does have that right. But uh, how many of you, Alan, don't you think the people could have some oversight in the sheriff's office? This is where the adults should speak at this level. We have to be, uh, let the schools decide on how to discipline our kids. We can only advise, but it's very, very, very specific to, to the incident. And by the way, I, I heard a lot of uh, problems with the Confederate flag. I lived in a Jewish neighborhood, and a friend of mine raised the Nazi flag, but there was more to it. We should investigate it. Every incident we have to investigate. We had the Nazi flag flying over a Jewish neighborhood from a Catholic school. The governor and mayor were Jewish. They came to the school and they found out the circumstances. They ended up thanking the kid because that was a, a war trophy. Kids do stupid things. Flags are supposed to fly. Our Jewish neighbors understood. They gave them a break. But our, I think we should do something about our adult problems. Things get tense out there. We do not need a racist sheriff, a sheriff who didn't take the oath, a sheriff who possibly tampered with an election. Is that the right word, Alan? Are you talking about the union leave? 
Dr. Tomat? Okay. Yeah. Uh, listen, I really appreciate the, the sincerity of the people. And God bless you all. Thank, thank you, John. Um, in response to your, your point about the sheriff, it is a, when you say constitutional office, it's a totally separate elected official. We can't, there's no jurisdiction the county has everything except their budget. And we do deal with it that way. And I think that might be another reason why the sheriff didn't resign, because I'm sure he didn't look forward to coming in front of me or the council with his budget. Um, with regard to a civilian oversight, that'll be up to the sheriff. And uh, the sheriff has to make that decision in his office if they want to have it. We can't force there to be a civilian oversight of the sheriff's office. So Bill McMahon will be the new sheriff uh, once he gets sworn in. He's a former, for those who don't know, he's the former chief of police of Howard County, served for eight years under the Ullman administration before I, I took office. Um, and so he'll be the one to, uh, to take that oath, and then he'll be the one to make the decision on, on any kind of uh, actions inside the sheriff's office. Um, Alan, could you uh, recommend it to Bill? I can certainly talk to him. I haven't talked to him since he got I mean, I think the people, yeah. you know, this is your representative yeah. for civil talk rights. I can talk to him. I can talk to Thank him. Thank you. Alan, can you yeah. clarify how long is Bill McMahon going to be the sheriff before for two there's another years, election? The next election. So he'll be sheriff until the 2018 election. And I don't know, I think he said he hasn't decided if he's going to run or not, so we'll see if he runs. If he doesn't run, it'll be an open seat. If he runs, he'll run for election, not re-election, so. Alan, yeah. Everyone stays so far away from the microphone, it's like, okay. Good to see you, Alan. Uh, I was impressed by uh, President Obama because even though the person he supported for the uh, next presidency, it was not the person he it was not the one that was elected. He said, I will do everything that I can to make sure that he is successful right. because the success of the president is a success for the whole uh, nation and we all, must all come together. Mm -hmm. So he supports something that, mm -hmm. that he really opposed. Yeah. I'm wondering if you will do the same because I know that uh, there was a a majority of citizens in Howard County who voted in favor of fair elections because they don't like big money in politics. You opposed that. I did. I was wondering if you would do whatever you could to make sure that the citizens in Howard County really are more involved in the decisions that are being made that affect their health, their safety, uh, the decisions that are made uh, in uh, land use decisions. And the, those, those decisions have been opposed around the county in many ways. And even the referendum, which 7,000 citizens assigned, mm -hmm. was opposed. And you did something um, in the Senate that, that helped that along. It wasn't mm -hmm. uh, strong enough as it should be, but you, know, you did what you could. Uh, but that is still going on. Uh, nothing has changed. You were elected, I think, because people wanted change. The uh, referendum. Uh, excuse me, the uh, fair elections was supported because people felt like they are not having their input being incorporated into the decisions being made that affect their communities, their livelihood, the future of Howard County. We have here your director of planning and safety, and I understand that uh, he is, he is uh, undertaking a review of the zoning code, mm -hmm. but citizens so far, to my knowledge, are not really a part of that. Mm -hmm. We have meetings, we have uh, pre-submission uh, pre meetings. Mm -hmm. So citizens can come in and have their, their, decisions, their decisions heard. Some of the developers, the small ones are really good. They're like my father in mm -hmm. uh, home state of Oregon who really looked at this spirit mm -hmm. of, of the laws and he embraced the spirit and went beyond minimal standards. Here, in this, in this country, it seems as though more people are focused on profit, and they will do anything to get their decisions uh, approved by the Department of Planning and Zoning because they meet the, the, um, they meet the minimum standards. We've even gotten past perjured testimony in, before the board, of, uh, the board of Appeals. And I've told you about this at one of the other uh, planning board meetings. I said, when you know that there's fraud that exists, when we have in, in the county code and the county regulations for submission of, of, of plans to the Department of Planning and Zoning that do not meet the requirements, for example, they do not uh, embrace, they do not reflect wetlands. Uh, 
They also do not permit independent professional environmentalists to go onto the land to inspect because it's up to the, the owners to give them permission. And permission was denied in front of the Board of Appeals. Permission was denied later. I was even threatened with trespass actions just for taking a picture in front of the property. And I was not even on the property at all. So we have every device possible being used to thwart those who are concerned about safety to their health, their safety, about traffic, about preservation of one of the last remaining tier two streams in all of Howard County. And yet, the site development plan that was approved by your director of planning and zoning was approved even though it did not meet the factual decisions of the, the, the uh, determinations made by the Board of Appeals. The criteria were not met. It's something that you ran on in, in the campaign, in your campaign for election. What I'm trying to get at is there are concerns here where citizens really want more input, more analysis, more comprehensive analysis, more input into the decisions that are being made. It's like some people say, a good healthy conversation is really uh, conducive to a, uh, to a good decision being made. And so far, we thought that there was going to be a change in the last election, but so far, it seems like there has not been a change. So what does that mean? We hope, and I think that, that the fact that citizens think that there is not enough of change is reflected in the last election, mm -hmm. which means they really sent a message that campaign finance reform is necessary so that it encourages more candidates to run for county offices. County offices, you know, the, the issues are here really non-political. They really talk about where our children go to school, they talk about what the, the, the increase in uh, class sizes when education really brings people to Howard County. They're concerned that the APFO does not, you know, the influx of, of uh, development does really not pay for all of the new services that are required to serve the increasing increased population and you know that in the, in the last election in uh, excuse me in the last budget you had to reduce the school board budget because there's so many other uh, demands for new services to meet the growing population plus the fact that the county revenues are, are lowering and and uh, so citizens really would like to have more input into um, elected officials and maybe the officials, the candidates, who get a little bit of extra financing for, uh, uh, for uh, campaigns will encourage more people to come in and will also ha have more of a focus on what the citizens really need and are looking for. So what I would like you to do, and you're the county executive, and I think that's one of the reasons that um, Trump was elected because he was saying, by golly, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And what I'd like to hear from you is, we are going to do this instead of, well, that's up to the sheriff. If he wants to have public input, you know, let him do that. Let him, you know, or, or we'll have to talk to the school board. I think we would like you to take a little stronger stand in saying this is where we are this is what we're going to do, and this is what I'm going to direct people to do so that the public is more represented and the right decisions are made going forward. Mm -hmm. That's what I ask of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I will let you know that the Val Lazans, I th I've heard that the public is actually pretty pleased with the way he's kind of brought more people in, and, and I know he's, um, he's been doing an awful lot to try to bring more public input. When you look at the code, I mean, of course, they're going to look at it first, and then it'll come to the public about some things as well. But, um, but no, I think there's been a change in the Department of Planning and Zoning. Uh, we first of all have a new Department of Planning and Zoning director than was there when I took office. And I think that, that Val has done a good job of reaching out to the community, being more uh, inclusive and inviting comment. Uh, so, so I think we've done it. There has been a difference there. Uh, so I think it has been a good. With regard to question A, just because a lot of people might not know what it was, 
they, they said it's fair elections, but it really was public financing at taxpayer dollars. And that's what I didn't like. I'm okay for public financing. I support public financing. I don't think it's right to take your tax dollars and give it to a political candidate. And so I oppose it for that reason. Um, and I will still oppose it. I'm never going to support that. I don't think anyone's tax dollars should go to a political candidate. Um, if they do it voluntarily through a checkoff system, all for that. I check off when I, when I pay taxes. But, um, but I'm not in favor of someone taking someone's tax dollars and giving to some other candidate they may not support so they can send them a mailing to tax the person they do support. Uh, I just don't think that's proper. So that's why we differ on that one. That's, that's fine. And, and I will tell you, money is not everything, especially not local elections. I was outspent by 50% by my opponent in 2014, and I won. Um, I won because I think we had a better message. I think we had a better strategy, and we worked harder. That's, uh, that, that's how local elections are done. We don't have big money in local elections. This is not, I mean, you shouldn't, try, don't characterize us like you have the national elections or even governor's elections. It's not big money. I mean, you can run a county council race for $30,000. I mean, it doesn't. It's, county council is you knock on every door, you talk to every person you can go to. You can actually, a county council is small enough, you can talk to every single person in the district. That's how, that's how I got elected to the, to the county council the first time. I knocked on every door. And then you go around and start knocking on the second time. I mean, that's how you get elected. It's by, the, it's by sweat equity. It, it's really not, money is not an issue for local elections in Howard County. Uh, if it was, I would not be standing here right now. Literally, I mean, 50% more betting again by my opponent, you would have thought that would have meant for sure I had to lose. Uh, but I didn't. So let's, 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 let Judy get, let Judy get a chance. Uh, yeah. Respond to that. Yeah. Uh, there are, there is evidence that shows that the people who make contributions, that was one of the yeah. complaints about Hillary Clinton, the people who make big contributions are the ones who are able to get in the door. We know that with the, uh, at the county administration building. The people who get in the door are the ones who uh, make big contributions. The, the opponents to uh, the yes question were all big donors, and uh, most of that money was coming from out of state from the information that I read. Oh, and what I'm telling you is this, what I'm, tell, what I'm telling you is this, yeah. that if the citizens, if, if people who accepted small uh, uh, donations were talked to, uh, uh, talked to those people, talked to the citizens who, who donated small amounts, like me, when they're elected, they're going to be talking to those people and finding out what their concerns are and expressing those in the elected offices. It also encourages more people to vote, and I think it encourages the elected officials, even those that are, uh, uh, get big money to be, to be uh, more concerned with those citizens. So I think there is some misinformation, and I also think with regard to that, am uh, that amount about uh, raised taxes, I think that if more citizens were uh, involved in the, the process, that uh, we would be able to to look more closely at where some of the money was being spent that that actually raises our taxes to support the infrastructure in other areas. Okay. So that was okay. my response to that. But I also okay. wanted to mention this: okay. I, I do appreciate chance, yeah. I do appreciate yeah. Yeah. Okay. that I do know that he has been talking to people. I do know that there are issues out there that, is, that are still kind of concerns that have been raised that, that are un, um, um, unresolved. Those can be found at the Fix HOCO website. They can also be found at the mm -hmm. Howard County Citizens Association listserv where issues are raised and have not been resolved. We should continue to work on those so yeah. that the public can be represented okay. better. And okay. if there's a better way uh, to uh, to finance campaigns to get the public uh, better represented, we would appreciate those recommendations rather yeah. than opposing no, something. No, I said Rather than opposing, yeah, no, you, you know, yeah. what I, the, my point, the initial point was, Obama supports the, the, the decision that people made. We would like you to do the same thing and support what the electors say, right. said. We want okay. uh, financing. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, that you come up. But I uh, just want to clarify one thing. The proponents of question A spent almost $300,000. The opponents spent $37,000, almost 10 to 1. The proponents, 99% of the money came from outside Howard County. 99% of the money. Some, but many of it's from, from outside the state. So it's, and, the, and for the, for the uh, opponents, most, if not all, came from Howard County uh, business. Because I know there's only like four or five or six or seven or eight people that, that donate. I know them all. Um, so I just want you to know, it was an outside organization trying to change Howard County, and that's, that bothered me. Yeah, Kitty, go ahead. Hello. Hey. 
Um, Wait a second. Yeah. Please. I don't. I want to be able to see your face. Whatever. <laughs> um, so, I already have my say with the board of ed, and I did what I promised you I would did. do. And all politicians should be afraid. Um, because I did it. Yeah. I said it, what I was going to do, and I did it. Mm -hmm. I know that the budget is coming up, mm -hmm. and you know I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. You always do. I demand. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to ask. I demand mm -hmm. you set aside some additional money for schools on the eastern side of the county. Okay. Okay. I mean, I mean we, we have given a lot of money to the school system, and, and the 13th high school site is a site that may have room for three schools. So we certainly are, are, are working toward that. Okay. I insist that mm -hmm. you find mm -hmm. some additional money. I mm -hmm. know that there's going to be a new school board, and mm -hmm. I'm already working on them. Yep. But you I get know them to request it because I can't build a school for them. They have to build. I it, yeah. understand that. Mm -hmm. I can insist that I will do my part mm -hmm. in asking you to set aside certain funds and have them be reasonable in their requests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they're reasonable in the request then for budget, then mm -hmm. I think that we'll have a much better dialogue going forward. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to say, Thank you. I really hope that we can do a little bit more on mm -hmm. some traffic because we're mm -hmm. pretty bad. Yeah. It's like on the east side, it's really bad. It and is. It is I think bad. that there's a number of intersections that are failing mm -hmm. or they should be failing. And I would really like to see some addition, additional mm -hmm. attention paid to those failing intersections. And um, yeah. I got to tell you, I just spent, before I went here, the most miserable HOA meeting uh -huh. about how sucky parking is. So Val, please, <laughs> if you guys ever build another, any other development, any development for townhouses. Minimum two spots per house. Please. Minimum two spots per house. Don't play the garage game. Don't play the drive house, driveway game. Minimum two spots per house. It's just, I don't even know how else to say it, but mm -hmm. it, we're not building single family houses. I mean, there are very few single family houses. Mm -hmm. Townhouses, I don't know how many more big projects there are, but we got to have two per house. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's ridiculous, and they have to be on the same street. <laughs> no, seriously. I don't care. It can't be all through the neighborhood. It has to be on the same street. So if we can somehow get the developers to do that, I think that would be a huge bonus mm -hmm. to know that you get two assigned parking spaces in front of your house. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Good. Thank you, Judy. And it wouldn't be a town hall meeting without Judy. Uh, so I appreciate you being here. But... Um, but we will continue to, I mean, we give almost a third of our capital budget goes to the school system. And so they, um, they certainly have to figure out what their priorities are. And, you know, so now we have a, a new school board, a, a lot of new members, and now's the time to get them to determine what their priorities are. And you can let them know what your priorities are, and I'm sure you have. And we'll see what there they come with. You know. We'll see what they come back with. Yes, ma'am. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank, first of all, thank you for having the yeah. town hall. Thank you for being here. Um, so I'm a River Hill parent, mm -hmm. and I live in Clarksville. And um, I, I was at the same forum uh, f a few okay. days ago, uh, the mm -hmm. technology forum, to express my mm -hmm. concern. But I had expressed my concern to the principal over the mm -hmm. weekend. She was available, I will say, and mm -hmm. g gave me her cell phone, and I talked with her. Mm -hmm. Because my first reaction in seeing the photo of the student with a gun. Mm -hmm. I know uh, you said it's a pellet gun. Mm -hmm. A gun is a gun. No, it is, the is. policy want, doesn't make I a distinction. I didn't want word out there that it was a handgun. I wouldn't want my son sure, yeah. shot by a, a no, pellet gun either. I just want to make sure that it was out there accurate. Okay, that's it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I knew that, yeah, that it was yeah. a pellet gun, yeah. not a problem. But I, I, again, I don't know. I, I agree with you. My, yeah. no, I, agree okay. with you. I agree with you. And I don't think the intent was just, hey, I'm holding a pellet gun, don't be afraid. I think the intent was fear and terror and combining a weapon the look on her face and the words that were on the right. page were sending a message and it meant to send a message. Um, and I think back if we were Columbine parents and we thought about if we had this type of information and even if it were three years old, it shows 
intent, it shows means, and you never know when a person who has both means and intent mm -hmm. acts on that. We've seen that people have planned out things for years and plotted for years. Um, and I don't know that there's a statute of limitations on terror threats, right? Um, and that the, the act and the posting and the sharing uh, was meant to instill fear, and it has. Um, and I think that a Columbine parent would give anything mm -hmm. to have known right. and had any idea right. and an ability to shut it down and stop. And so I was a little disturbed about the kind of dismissive that it was three years ago. And to me, that it, it's real and, and has instilled real fear every day to the point where Monday morning at 7 o'clock, I went up to the school. I needed to look around and see, was there extra security? I told my son, I was like, I'm going to text you maybe a couple times a day. Tell me if she shows up. I don't want her anywhere near my child. I don't think she should be near any child. Um, because that was a threat. Um, and it, it is real still. Asked him today, did she show up? You know, it's, it's real. It's, it's real and real fear every day um, and concern because someone had intent and means. Um, and uh, I, 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 I don't want us to walk away and think, oh, it was a pellet gun, or, and oh, it was three years ago. Mm -hmm. It's very real every day for me as a parent, and I want to make sure that's that. registered. One of the things, I understand that you suggested um, a town hall, mm -hmm. and it sounded singular to me. And, and to me, these di this dialogue, needs to be an ongoing dialogue mm -hmm. that it can't be solved by one town hall by I think it's your right. office of civil human rights human rights yeah. human rights human rights mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. it's a thread that it's over time that we have to have this expression and have multiple parts of the community come okay. together over time and my recommendation is not to have a mm -hmm. town hall but to have a series and have a commitment for the rest of your administration mm -hmm. that this is going to be a thread mm -hmm. that's real and we're going to talk about these things and we're going to come together and it's going to be maybe even breakout sessions with problem solving, mm -hmm. right? Not just a kind of discussion, but we've got real, here's a challenge. How right. would this community filled with students right. and com um, community leaders, religious leaders, mm -hmm. educators, mm -hmm. come together and solve this problem mm -hmm. or these problems mm -hmm. over time mm -hmm. in your administration? Yeah. That would be, okay. uh, frankly, my request mm -hmm. that it, it be uh, longer. And then lastly for me, I just wanted to say, um, as I said on Monday, that when we're talking about how do we keep this from happening, students, what I understand, the word on the street from students, and you know, they kind of know even before we know, even if you can't well, share so. privacy, okay. right, they know. The word on the streets is nothing's going to happen to the students. Mm -hmm. That nothing's going to happen. And then for my son to look in his face and to know that someone has made this threat, mm -hmm. has, has reached a new watermark, right, new territory here, targeted at people who look like him. Mm -hmm. um, what is the value that's on his life mm -hmm. and him if nothing happens? Mm -hmm. And that, to see that look on his face, that he was just resigned, that he's like, Mom, I mean, I know you keep asking me, is she back? She's coming back mm -hmm. and nothing's going to happen. That's what everybody's saying. Mm -hmm. And the strongest statement has to be married to the strongest action. Mm -hmm. And that people react to action, because the words will be forgotten, <laughs> but the action mm -hmm. and the consequences will set, here's our bar of what's really not acceptable. Otherwise, what one signals is that it would take even more to have an expulsion mm -hmm. in th an, an instance like that, and you invite people to at least reach that bar or exceed that bar next. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask then, if, if it's acceptable for someone to have threatened my kid, what do I do for my kid? Do I 
are my kid. Like what, what I, my job is to protect my child, right? right? It, at the school system, even though it's the first thing on their policy, mm -hmm. is to protect the school. If, that, if that's not going to happen, what must I do as a parent to instill that you are loved, you are valued, and the systems and the institutions that you've put your faith in, that you've clearly performed in as a, like an all A, GT, AP student since third grade, right? Mm -hmm. That you've put your faith in these people, I, they, I, you cannot fail them. You cannot fail the community by not doing anything or having the discipline not be strong enough to send the signal that it's not just words, that it is right. action. Right. And so that, I just yeah. wanted to make sure no. I shared that. Thank, thank you very much for sharing. I thought you did a great job of expressing yourself and I think probably expressing what everybody's feeling too. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with you that we need to make it clear and we need to make it sure that people know that, that we're not going to tolerate this type of behavior. Um, and, and, and I, your suggestion is fine about having more. I mean, this is one they could certainly, we could certainly have more, and I think that's a good idea to continue the discussion on and on. Um, it seems like we always seem to have a discussion when something happens, and then we just kind of goes away. I mean, it happened last spring. We had, I think, as a Bridgeway Community Church and some other places, that we had discussion, yeah. And so, and it kind of goes away. I mean, but you're right, we need to continue to have the ongoing dialogue. That's a good point. Uh, so I'll talk to Dr. Sands about that as well. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Steele. How are you doing, Mr. Kittle? Good, uh, you? If, if, if anyone don't know, my name is David Steele. I'm the president of the Howard County branch at NAACP. I don't know if you've seen my words in the paper recently on different issues. Uh, I have to commend the county executive as well as the school board in their quick response to some of the instances that are taking place, not only here in Howard County, but throughout the country, in every county in this state of ours. Um, again, I've asked the school system, Dr. I always call her Dr. Wise. Dr. Dr. Fisher, Linda Wise. Linda well, Wise. Linda Wise. Is she a doctor right. too? I don't know. She's not a doctor, but I always call her doctor. Yeah. But I have to commend the school system. Whenever there's an incident in Howard County, especially as it pertains to race or, or, or hate, whether it's color, gender, or whatever, I get a call almost immediately from the school system to let me know that the incident is taking place and that things are being enacted to eradicate that issue immediately. I've asked Mrs. Wise, along with Dr. Foose, to utilize the full breadth and width of the school system's code of conduct against any student that, per, that insists on standing with, with weapons. Point of reference, Tamir Rice had a pellet gun, mm -hmm. and what happened to him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was killed. Right. So again, I, I, all I can do is ask the school system again to exercise its full authority to students that do not adhere to the rules and to act quickly and to send a clear message that this will not take place in Howard County. And that's all I, that I can ask. I hate to get to that point where we're starting to look at these situations from a purely civil rights perspective because we're playing a different game now. You know, I'm gonna bring people in here. We're going to address that issue from a civil rights perspective. And the young man stated, they're kids. Yeah, they're kids. But, you know, kids can make some terrible decisions as well. Um, I raised my hand when, I, when the gentleman asked, had anyone ever had a gun pulled on them by the police in Howard County? I've had my, a gun pulled on me in Howard County by police officers that were white and black. So it's not a black-white issue that a white cop is pulling a gun on me. You know, what frightened me was that a black cop pulled a, cop, pulled a gun on me as well. So maybe it's not an issue of black or white. Maybe people are just afraid, the police are afraid, and they're doing what they're they're, 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 they're just afraid. And we have to reassure our police that, you know, a, a, a black man in a suit, by the way, is not a threat. Lastly, the sheriff, and the gentleman stated again, who knew? Because I didn't. I didn't know. I did not know. And it bothers me that someone that works for an authoritative figure did not have the wherewithal to at least call me because the red flags would have been flying all over the place from my perspective. But again, I don't know if you read my words. Again, as soon as I heard it, I asked for his resignation immediately, mm -hmm. immediately. And again, I have to state that I was pleased that he finally resigned. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I have worked with Mr. McMahon a number of years when he was- The, the, uh, the new sheriff. The new sheriff in town. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, when he was formerly the chief of police in Howard County. I'm well aware of some of his background and some of the actions that he's taken based on some of the input that I provided to him that I felt needed to change in the police system, and he acted accordingly. Mm -hmm. So I think Mr. McMahon 
uh, hopefully we'll take a look from the top down because there were some people in very, very senior positions that were direct reports to Mr. Fitzgerald that I find complicit in some of his actions. And my statements in the paper were quite, quite clear. If he finds that that existed, I want it rooted out of Howard County because we deserve better. Mm -hmm. Not just me, all of us deserve better here in Howard County. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, we talked about the school system, the police, the community meetings. Again, we see these incidences from a racial perspective taking place in our school system, but believe it or not, it doesn't originate there. It originates in the community. And these kids are bringing those thoughts, you know, to school with them. So maybe we need to quit looking at the school's response. We need to respond as a community. We need to ask communities of color, of non-color, of lesbians, of gays, or short, tall, fat, and whatever, that we need to all sit down and have a discussion about this because this is our problem, not the school's problem. And again, I'd like to commend Mr. Kittleman. I've known him for a number of years. We've worked together quite successfully over, over the years. And uh, again, Howard County is only going to be as good as we make it as we make it. No. He's, the, he's the leader of our community from an executive standpoint, but bottom line is the leader's no good without the soldiers, and we're the soldiers. Mm -hmm. So let's act accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Um, I wanted to, um, I mean, you talked about a lot of things there, but I also want to go back to the previous speaker, too, because I think what's interesting now is a lot of times recently we've been talking about police officers because that was the issue that we talked about an awful lot how do police officers treat uh, individuals um, and we have focused an awful lot of attention on police community policing and, and having our police department meet with people and I think our police department does a very good job in Howard County of trying to make sure that they have uh, uh, folks who work with young people who work with folks from the uh, uh, gay community and make sure everybody knows that, that the police department is going to relate to them in appropriate ways. Um, I have an LGBT roundtable that meets every, every three months and have come in and have them meet with different department heads. And the first one was the police department along with corrections. And just listening to them to be able to have a discussion about what about the police officers do we need to focus on for them to understand uh, the folks in the gay community. And we do the same thing with other minorities and other, other, other groups in Howard County. Uh, so we're focusing on that. But I just think it's interesting that, you know, We've had so many times thinking about police, 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 police. This is not police. This is just us talking and our young people and people treating people with disrespect and threats and fear. And it goes even beyond that. You know, now, it's like the Mr. Steele said, this is our whole community. So now we need to figure out, and we have to figure out a way, because you talked about your, I think your son, right? Yeah. Your son being afraid to go to school. Now that cannot happen in Howard County. We cannot have children being afraid to go to school. I know, no, but, I'm playing, but we have to figure out how we can stop that. And this is yeah. where I get back to this yeah. issue of consequences and discipline. And right. I, yeah. it's, it's very it's serious. What, what happened with this three-year-old thing was the girl said, I'm going to shoot niggers. Mm -hmm. So that is a real threat. Right. So I hear the man over here when he mm -hmm. says some of the stuff is not a race issue. That's mm -hmm. a racial issue. That was that you're talking about legally protected classes. Mm -hmm. And if her son has to go to school and see someone who posted that and gets away with it, that's a very, very strong signal mm -hmm. that is being sent. I get kids are kids. But let's just say her son went and assaulted this girl because he was fearful. Mm -hmm. I would bet good money, and I'm not a betting person, mm -hmm. that he would be expelled from the school system. Mm -hmm. The facts and the data bear that out. Mm -hmm. Folks have to understand that we need to deal with these things really. And we all have to talk about it. It's not a minority issue. Talking to, to minorities is not going to fix it. It's all of us together, everyone together, but action, action. Mm -hmm. Would you want to sit in a classroom mm -hmm. or walk down the hallway by someone who said that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot white men. Would you yeah. want to walk by that person? Not. Of course not. No yeah. one wants to do that. And these are our kids. Mm -hmm. So while it sounds as if people are worried about the impact on the, the kids who are the perpetrators, what about the kids who are the mm -hmm. victims? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, actually, I, I think we're more worried about the impact of kids or the victims. The, the perpetrators, I'm not trying to protect them at all. No, I don't think we should protect them. And it's not yeah. You. yeah, I know. It's I know. Not, it's not 
I understand that. I understand that. But I mean, I just want people to know that that we have to come together as a community to do something. We we, we have certain tools that are toolbox, and some we don't have. You know, you know, we don't have a toolbox that says, okay, you know, whether the parents are the ones who taught this child to be that way, or whether I mean, you know, frankly, I, you know, I wish, th I know, but I wish they weren't even part of our community. But we can't say you have to leave our community. We don't have that ability. So we have to figure out what can we do. And, and I think, you know, I think the sheriff, go back to sheriff, I think the sheriff incident is a good symbol of what we could do. And I think we can be as strong on this as well. And we maybe be for more forceful. Someone talked about force. I mean, be more forceful in what we, what we say. In, in our words, you'd be more forceful. And in, our, in, our, in the way we meet with people. But, um, but I just go back to the fact that we have to figure out a way. I know. You know, we have to figure out a way that they, they would, but we have to figure out a way to ensure our children are safe. I mean, that's what, I mean, we have to figure out a way to make sure our children are safe. That, that's, that, that's, that's number one. It's got to be number one for everything. Yeah. And so, yeah, all, all, all children, I'm not, I mean, all our children. So we have to figure out how we can make that happen with the tools that we have. And that's the issue. Because I know, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, and when you have a, a situation like this that can get out of hand, mm -hmm. you have to use the tools to the fullest extent possible. Not here, not here. Mm -hmm. I hear you, I hear you. Okay, I'm good. Uh, well, the same two that came up before. Okay, I'll let you go first. Um, follow up. Uh, you, mm. you said, oh, we have to do with this like we did with the sheriff. Mm -hmm. So then who is the culpable party who is not Ha who is not imposing consequences? Who should you and the council and all of us call on to take action or resign or be fired? Who should we call? Well, I don't know if there's anyone yet to take the issue resign or be fired. Um, but I think we need to work with the school system. I mean, a lot of this is through the school system where things have happened. So we need to work with the school system. But I wouldn't say it's someone. Frankly, I guess you could say the, the voters already made that decision for some people. Um, no. I, uh, then I don't see the relevance of your sheriff example. No, no, the, the sheriff example is that, well, I guess I... Everybody I say, stepped but, forward. But, but there isn't somebody I can say is a blame for this. The sheriff, we had something. I mean, we had in concrete what isn't, he had done. Isn't somebody to blame for, for no consequences for the student? I, 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 I don't know who that one person is. I don't know if there's one that, person. I guess that's that. what I'm asking. I mean, I, I, I don't know. There's not one person. I can say that person's a fault. I don't have that person. I don't know that person. Well, the so. Board of Education. Yeah. Board of Education? And, um, yeah. So, so we should all call the Board of Education and the superintendent and demand consequences for this action. That's, that's what we've been talking about. That's all right. Exactly, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought I didn't. Yeah. Yes, John. You, you raised so many issues. And, uh, there's so many good people here, but it, it is on us. And those who are wiser than me maybe can figure out a way to handle this. This lady here, you, certainly three years is too long to wait and when someone could be a threat. We have to know as a community how to handle this. Now, I've had some experience with riots in Howard County that have never been transparent to the public. Oakland Mills and Glenelg, many years ago. People die. People die. Now, I had, with uh, Mr. Roby's help, I had two policemen censored, for whatever that means. But all the activists are here. It's up to you to address the school problems and every other problem. Okay. The people are here. Uh, okay, yeah. John. Okay, thank you. I, I, I didn't realize what time it was until you started talking. Um, but no, I, I am so glad you're here. I really am. I'm so glad everybody's here, but I just also want to be respectful. Um, does anyone else who hasn't spoken uh, want to ask a question? Uh, yes, man, come forward. Please come forward. Yeah. No, no, thank you. No, no, I, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Good evening, and thank you so yeah. much for mm -hmm. having this town hall. And I'd like to thank everyone that stood mm -hmm. up before me and had mm -hmm. something to say. Um, you indicated that with regard to the um, inappropriate racially charged mm -hmm. hate speech that's, um, that's happening in the school system, that you've asked 
Dr. Sands, who's the administrator of the Office of Human Rights, Rights. to hold a forum. Um, what, if any, opportunities are there for citizens to volunteer and help with that, or is that not appropriate because she's that oh, no, no. division I mean, is handling it? I mean, we, I just talked to her today about doing this because I, I, this is for a reason. So I, I can certainly, uh, if you give your contact information, I can have her contact you and see how you want to be part of that. No, we, I mean, like I said, the. Last spring, we made sure it was all young people. We brought in, like, from every high school, somebody, some, some young people come and talk about what, what do you think we can do to affect change and make people not be this way, and young people not be this way. So, uh, no, I think anyone in the community who wants to be involved, please, let me give your contact information before we leave, and I'll give it to Dr. Sands. Thank you. No, thanks for volunteering to do that, too. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Well, I will. I thank you very much for coming out. I know that, um, that there are a lot of uh, folks who are anxious, and, and, and I can certainly understand why. Um, but I can just tell you that we'll continue in Howard County to be the place that you and I grew up in. And, you know, you know I, I go back to hearken to my dad. I mean, my dad made it clear to me when I was growing up that everybody's treated with respect regardless of their race, color, everything. And that's how we're going to continue to run Howard County to make sure that happens. So uh, we'll work with the school system, work with the community, work with everybody to make sure, one, our kids feel safe, two, they're respected, and, um, and do whatever we can uh, to make that happen. So thank you very much for being out here. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank